Hey guys, it's Yorker here, and welcome to the 21st episode of the In-Depth Track Guide Series for Assetto Corsa Competizione, where I've been sharing my knowledge on each circuit and giving you juicy tips for each one to help you improve your lap times and better your ability at driving each track. So if this is your first time here and viewing one of these In-Depth Track Guide videos, then please consider subscribing and also taking a look at all the other videos in the playlist. So for episode 21, we are going to be looking at Circuit of the Americas in the United States of America. The circuit's length is 3.42 miles, which equates to 5.51 kilometers, has a total of 20 corners. It will require a setup that utilizes medium to high downforce with medium to hard suspension. And then your key overtaking areas are gonna be turns one, turn 11, turn 12, turn 13, turn 19, and turn 20. So let's begin with the pit entry here at Kota and it could be found on the left hand side of the track just before the final corner. What you want to do is try and open up the entrance to the pit lane as much as possible and carry a little bit of speed in. You'll be needing to brake before you get to the pit entry slip road and then the pit limiter line can be found right at the beginning of the barriers there between the pit entry slip road and the inside of the circuit. At the opposite end of the pit lane you're going to be disengaging the pit limiter at the line just as the pit exit slip road begins with the barrier there on the left hand side of the circuit it can also be found right underneath the large black positional tower that could be found up against the concrete wall between the pit lane and the circuit and then as you disengage the pit limiter you're going to stay to the left hand side of the line accelerating up the hill towards the inside of turn one just watching out for any traffic or any cars that are there on the actual racing line coming from the actual main circuit so moving on to the main circuit, our breaking point for turn one is going to be at the white painted tarmac strip just off to the side of the circuit there. That aligns with the 100 brake marker board as we come up towards this corner. What you want to be doing is straddling the curb a little bit with the car as well, braking hard and then shifting all the way down into first gear, aiming to hook up the apex here fairly late in the corner. What you want to be doing as the entrance to the turn is quite a bit wider than the exit is making use of the room on the entry and instead focusing on the exit and getting a good drive coming off of the corner. You want to stay off the orange turtle curb that's here on the inside, but the serrated curb, you can use that in both the dry and also wet conditions. So talking more about the exit of turn one, we've got a serrated curb out here with some green painted tarmac and also three orange baguette curbs that we can see out here. We want to be avoiding those orange baguette curbs as they're going to hurt our traction coming off the corner, but we can run the serrated curb just fine. So feel free to use it in the dry conditions, however, as this is a traction zone as you start down the hill towards turn two, we'll be wanting to avoid it in the wet. So for the right hander of turn two, we should be taking this completely flat out in the dry conditions. With the wetter conditions, you may need to do a small lift depending on how wet exactly it is. It's a fourth gear corner and although there's no camber, there is a little bit of compression here which should help you hook up towards the inside curb. You can run this inside curb no problem in the dry conditions. However, you'll be wanting to take caution with it in the wet, probably avoid it entirely. And you definitely do not want to be putting your wheels onto the painted tarmac on the inside as that is going to be very very wet and very very slippery. Coming to the exit there is a serrated curb out here with some painted tarmac and an unpainted tarmac beyond that. We don't necessarily need to be running out this far wide in the dry conditions however it is a curb that you can use in the dry and you can probably also use in the wet providing you've got a bit of speed up and therefore generating enough downforce. Next up there's the fast flowing S's section here at Kota. The first is turn three which is going to be a very quick left-handed kink coming through here. You want to clip the inside curb here, try and take as much of it as possible whilst trying to keep two wheels within the white lines. You don't need to lift, you can take this completely flat out. And then as we flick right into turn four, it's going to be the very, very smallest dabs of the brake. We're again going to be trying to take as much of the curbing as we possibly can while still keeping two wheels within the white lines to not exceed track limits. We should be in fourth, maybe fifth gear if the car prefers it. And we should be able to use the curb no problem in the dry conditions. However, caution with it in the wet to make sure that you don't dip two wheels over the serrated curb onto the painted tarmac. Just as we then go to flick left into the left-hander of turn five, it's going to be another small little dab of the brake before turning the car in. We should be in third gear this time coming through this left hander. Once again trying to take as much of the inside curb as possible whilst maintaining two wheels within the white lines. Again you can use this curb in the dry conditions just to take caution in the wet. 
And then it's going to be a very small dab of the break as we flick right into the long right hander of turn six. We're going to hook up an early apex here in third gear using as much of the curb as we possibly can, letting the car continue to coast through the turn and then hooking up a second apex just underneath the gantry bridge where once again we want to try and clip the inside curb but we do need to maintain two wheels within the white lines at all times coming through this double apex corner. You can use these curbs in the dry conditions however do take caution in the wet make sure that you do not dip your wheels over onto that wet painted tarmac. Coming off turn 6, coming in towards turn 7, we want to try and keep the car tight to the right hand side of the circuit to open up turn 7 as much as possible. As we get to the grey and red tech pro barriers on the right hand side of the circuit, that's going to be a reference for our braking point where it's going to be another short dab of the brake before shifting down into second gear. If you need it, you can maintain it in third before hooking up again the apex here on the inside curb. Once more, take plenty of curb here on the inside, just keep two wheels within the white lines as to not exceed track limits. And invalidate your lap time or get a track limits warning and again like the corners preceding it you can use the inside curb in the dry conditions however do take caution in the wet and avoid dipping your wheels onto the wet painted tarmac Next up is the long right hander of turn 8 and your line coming through this corner is going to depend on whether there is a car behind you looking to try and overtake. If there is you may want to take the tighter line that is resembled with the dark rubber painted line going through the corner hugging that inside curve just to make sure that they don't try and nip up the inside. The other is the preferred line that I like to take where if you've got a little bit more breathing room behind you open up the entry to the corner brake and shift the car down into second gear and instead let the car coast in and try and hook up a later apex in the turn roughly about here use plenty of the curb on the inside again keeping two wheels within the white lines but if you do get the chance to use that wider entry coming into the corner you'll be able to maintain a higher apex speed be able to get on the throttle a little bit earlier and give you a better run coming off the corner and more grip going through the following turn of turn nine the left hander afterwards so looking at this left hander of turn 9, we should be in second or third gear. There's no need to brake or lift coming through this corner. Instead, you should be on throttle. As you progress through the corner, you should be getting more aggressively onto the throttle before obviously getting full throttle towards the exit. We want to be using plenty of curb on the inside here, using it in the dry conditions. However, in the wet, you'll probably want to be avoiding the curb pretty much entirely. Now, when it comes to the exit, we've got a standard serrated curb with an additional FIA serrated curb beyond that. We can use these curbs in the dry conditions. However, in the wet, we'll be wanting to avoid these entirely as it is a key traction zone coming off the corner. Also coming over that crest may hurt your traction a little bit. So do be wary of that. And then next up is a very quick left-handed kink of turn 10. Again, no need to slow down coming into this corner. It should be flat out in both the dry and also the wet conditions. You'll be accelerating up through fourth gear as you come through here. Use the inside curb. You can do this in both the dry and wet conditions, although it's going to be a little bit wet and a little bit slippery you should be generating enough downforce at this point to be able to take the curb on the inside just fine and then as we come down the hill we come into the braking zone for turn 11. You're going to want to position the car to the right hand side of the circuit and our braking reference is going to be the white painted tarmac just to the side of the circuit. Again this aligns with the 100 meter board just like it does in turn 1. We're going to be braking hard and shifting all the way down into first gear and just like turn 1 the entry to this corner is quite wide whereas it tightens up on the exit. So the apex that we're going to be looking for is going to be quite late in the corner. The exit here is key because there is a mass long straight that follows off this turn so prioritize the exit rather than the entry the inside curb here does feature a large turtle curb so you want to avoid that but you can run the serrated curb that is here on the inside in both the dry and also the wet conditions the exit to turn 11 is again fairly similar to turn 1 where we've got a standard serrated curb with painted tarmac and some baguette curbs out here. Use the serrated curbs, stay off of the baguette curbs as that's going to hurt our traction coming off of the corner. And then in the wet conditions you'll also want to stay off of both the baguette and also serrated curbs out here just to try and make sure that we get the power down and get the best run coming down this nice long back straight. 
At the end of it, we're going to be at quite high speed. We're going to be positioning ourselves on the right hand side of the circuit and we're going to be looking for the white painted tarmac that is adjacent to the 150 meter board right next to the red marshal tent that is there just outside the confines of the circuit. Just after that, about 10 meters or so, so about 140 meters before the corner. Breaking hard, shifting all the way down into first gear and once again we've got a wider entry. So we're once more going to be looking for that slightly later apex hooking up the serrated curb on the inside staying off of the orange turtle curb that is there on the inside and we can be hooking this serrated curb up in both the dry and wet conditions. We're then going to accelerate hard coming off of the corner letting the car drift over to the right hand side of the circuit where there is once more some serrated curbs with some baguette curbs here on the outside. We can use this serrated curb in the dry conditions however avoid both the baguette curbs and the serrated curb in the wet as to not hurt your traction coming off the corner. We're then going to bring the car to the left hand side of the circuit and be looking for the 50 meter board and the white strip of painted tarmac just off the actual racing line. Just after this we're going to be braking hard and shifting the car down into first gear trail braking into the corner a little bit. We're then going to be hooking up our apex on the inside curb here. There is a orange sausage curb on the inside that we need to be wary of so try and stay off of that. There's no camber in this turn and when it comes to the usage of this inside serrated curb in the dry and wet conditions you should be fine to run it in both. Coming to the exit, there is a serrated curb on the outside here, but you don't necessarily need to run the car all the way to the outside as you're pretty much going to be continuing the turning into turn 14 and you're going to be apexing that around about here on the inside curb. So try not to worry about the exit curve for turn 13 too much. Very quickly after turn 14, we're going to come into the tight left hander of turn 15. Just as the corner kinks to the left and the curb starts there on the inside is going to be our braking point. We're going to be braking hard and following a line that stays towards the middle of the circuit keeping to the rubbered in line as we shift ourselves down into first gear. Again we've got a wider entry coming into this corner so focusing on getting a good exit and for that we're going to be hooking up a late apex is going to be the key to this turn. Once again it's a serrated curb that we are fine to use in both the dry and wet conditions however there is a large orange turtle curb on the inside here and that you want to be staying clear of. On the exit we are once again greeted with a serrated curb with some painted tarmac and then a few baguette curbs. Once more we want to be staying off of the baguette curbs like we have done previously. That will give us the best run coming off of the corner. We can use the serrated curb in the dry conditions however when it comes to the wet you'll be wanting to stay off of both pretty much entirely. Next up is the fast right handed kink of turn 16. You want to be positioned in the car roughly about here just off the inside curb. You should be flat out at this point but just afterwards you want to be lifting off and letting the car coast in towards the apex of turn 17 where we want to be taking as much curb on the inside as we possibly can whilst trying to maintain two wheels within the white lines to avoid exceeding track limits. We should be in third gear and you want to be patient with the throttle coming through the corner. If you get on the accelerator too early you'll wash out wide and then you'll be scrubbing the tyres heavily causing more understeer and taking life out of them so instead be patient with the throttle follow the rubbered inline through the corner and hug the inside curb as you continue on through turn 18 and heading out towards the exit of the corner. There is a serrated curb out here with some painted tarmac beyond it however we should not be getting out that far instead we want to try and keep the car towards the middle of the circuit to try and bring it back over to the right hand side as quickly as we possibly can. If you do end up running out this far wide you should be fine to run the curb in both the dry and wet conditions just watch out for the wet painted tarmac as that is going to be extra slippery. We then come into the penultimate turn on the circuit and we want to try and bring the car as far to the right hand side as we possibly can. Over on the barrier is the 50 brake marker board and that is going to be our reference for this second to last turn. We're going to brake a little bit, trail brake into the corner as well and shift that car down into third gear. If you need to use second you can do so but try and maintain the car and try and maintain, maintain the speed in third. You want to hook up the inside curb just here, stay off of the orange sausage curb on the inside as clipping that will bounce and unsettle the car and likely send it out wide. But using that lower serrated curb you'll be absolutely fine to run that in the dry conditions and you should be fine to run it in the wet as well. Coming to the exit we've got a standard serrated curb here with some additional FIA serrated curbing beyond that. 
This is one of the few corners on the circuit that is a little bit more relaxed with the track limits. However, you do want to keep at least two wheels on the red and white serrated curbing. If you go and dip all four wheels beyond that, you will invalidate your lap. The curbing out here, you'll be fine to run in the dry conditions. However, in the wet, you'll want to take caution out here as you should be fine to run the actual curbing, but that green painted tarmac beyond that will be very, very slippery and hurt your traction coming off the corner. We're then into the final turn and again we're going to be on the right hand side of the circuit. Just as we get to the slip road there on the right hand side, just after that about 5-10 to 10 meters is going to be the start of our braking zone where we're going to be braking hard and shifting down into first gear for the majority of cars. A little bit of trail braking will be needed as you turn into the corner. At the apex we've got a serrated curb with a orange turtle shell curb there on the inside. We want to stay off that orange turtle shell curb as that will bounce and unsettle the car. So instead just run this serrated curb and you'll be fine to do this in both the dry and wet conditions and then finally we're going to power hard out of the corner making use of the serrated curb that's out here in the dry conditions avoid the curbing out here entirely in the wet as it is a traction zone and beyond the serrated curb we do have some green painted tarmac as well as some baguette curbs and of course we want to be staying clear of these entirely as that will affect our run to the start finish line to complete our lap so now that we've completed the breakdown of each individual corner, let's take a look at piecing it all together at full racing speed. So now that we've completed a competitive lap at Circuit of the Americas, I just want to finish the episode with a little bit of a disclaimer. Please keep in mind the characteristics of your car, the car setup and the car conditions that you're driving in. Some cars may be able to brake or handle curbs slightly better than others and whilst I did point out which curbs you can and can't use in both the dry and wet conditions, do take note of these and apply accordingly depending on the conditions that you're racing in as you may need to adapt slightly. Other than that though, I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this episode and have gained some additional lap time here at Circuit of the Americas. And of course, please let me know if you did. And if you have any questions, feel free to fire away in the comment section below as well. Until the next video, have fun, stay safe and take care.